This is Emily with Emily. Um, and I'm going to talk to you today about Clip Studio Paint. Yay! Um, so, uh, so I've got a lot of Clip Studios, a lot of things. Um, it's a program primarily focused on illustration and comic creation. Uh, it does have the capabilities to make short animations and there are two versions um, on their website. If you go to it, uh, they'll have this. It'll determine what um, you'd like. You can do a subscription-based or uh, you can do a um, one-time purchase for either Pro or EX. EX does have more features, but I have Pro and that has pretty much everything that I need on it. It is uh, pretty comparable to Photoshop, uh, which is why uh, it's a good Photoshop alternative if you're just looking for a one-time purchase uh, and you want to do uh, illustrations, comics, or concept art. Um, there are a few differences from Clip Studio versus Photoshop though. Uh, Clip Studio is more tor geared towards illustration with minimal typography and photo editing capabilities, where Photoshop is gonna have the extensive photo editing and typography tools with some, some drawing tools in the program. Uh, but both are roster based and they can both make short animations. Uh, Photoshop is currently only subscription based. So uh, if you're looking for a cheaper alternative, Clip Studio is definitely the way to go. Uh, and when you open Clip Studio for the first time, it's actually going to open a launcher, which looks like this. And let me switch over to that. This one. Um, when you open it, it'll have. Um, you can open paint right here. There's a modeler tool that allows you to load 3D assets. Uh, you can manage your works um, and manage materials because there's a large database of assets that are available to you uh, either from users or Clip Studio itself. They also have a website full of tutorials and uh, a Q&A forum, tips, uh, sharing. And then these export and publish are, they show them to you, but unless you have EX, they're not really gonna be useful for you. And then let's get into the program, which I already have up. So when we get into the program, uh, a brief overview is we've got the tool window up here that's gonna have your basic like tools that everybody has <laughs> or all programs have. Um, and then this is the tool palette. There's the sub tool palette, which if you click on a tool like Zoom, there's the subtool palette which has zoom in and zoom out. So there are different options compact within the Zoom tool itself. And then below the subtool palette is the tool property, which allows you to determine how the tool will act. So if we go to the um, this marquee tool you can see that you can ask it how to act. You can select new, select additionally, deselect partially, or already selected parts. And then anti-aliasing, which is determining the kind of gradient or if it's like kind of more bitmap. And that's for all of these tools down here. 
all of them are going to have more tools packed into the sub tool palette. And then you can further control them through the tool property panel. If you ever um, mess with these, you can always reset it back to default with this little button right here at the bottom next to the wrench. Uh, when you're opening Clip Studio for the first time, it's if you're using a tablet or a Cintiq or an iPad or uh, you can also use a Surface Pro, um, you're, it, you can use it right out of the box, the metaphorical box, because um, it doesn't have a physical thing. Uh, you can use it right out of the box, but if you'll notice that sometimes the pen pressure doesn't work exactly how you want it to, you can adjust the pen pressure by going to File, Pressure Settings, and you can then draw on the screen however you need to, and it's going, you're going to want to vary the intensity a lot, and it's going to read how you draw, and it'll be a lot more user-friendly to how you hold your uh, pen or stylus, because some people do like really heavy, but they want those light strokes, um, or some people draw really light, but they want those heavier strokes. You can also uh, change what it's doing on that, like you saw the you, this uh, is editable. So you can you can revert that if you decide it messes up, and you can test it out. Then in the, you've got the, am I going too fast? I'm so sorry. Okay, okay. So we've got the tools palette. Um, we can look at that a little bit further and more in depth. So starting from the top, we have Zoom which will allow you to zoom in and out. Alternatively, you can uh, go over to the navigator tool, which is right here, which allows you to zoom in and out. And you can zoom with the forward slash key. Well, you can switch to the zoom tool with the forward slash key. So if I was on paintbrush and I wanted to zoom, I just have to hit forward slash on my keyboard. And then we've got the move tool, which allows you to move around the board or you can rotate. You can also rotate from the navigator tool right here on this slider. If you want to reset it here and these ones do short increments, 15 degree increments. We've got the select tool, which is just if you want to move around, you can I've never used these options. I always use object. And then we've got move layer, move tone pattern, or move grid. for the move, which you can switch to on the K key on your keyboard. The marquee tool um, allows you to do select. I always like to have select additionally on so I can uh, 
you know, select and then fill it in. Or we'll need to deselect. Then there's the magic wand tool. You can select from current layer, from all layers, or from reference layers. Then the eyedropper tool allows you to pick colors. So here's a color, but I want to go back to this one. And now it's back on that color. And I can press this color if I want it to to switch between these two colors, say there's like a, it's almost white or this one. If I wanted to switch between those two, I can press X or click it, uh, X on the keyboard. And Next, we have the pen tool. Inside the subtool palette, you can see that there's a pen tool, but there's also a marker tool. Uh, each of these act differently. So this one's going to mimic a G pen, which is like a classic nib style uh, used in comic making. Or there's the real G pen, which just has a little bit more texture if we zoom in on it. And it has like lighter pressure. Uh, I downloaded these ones, which I can show you how to do when we get to that part. Uh, we've got the water. This is a brush tool, which you can do by going through B. Uh, if you are using, if you have my doc even open, uh, you'll notice that some of these pen, pencil, um, they're both on the P key, and then brush, airbrush, and decoration are all on the B key. You can always cycle through them by pressing B on your keyboard. And so, say you accidentally pressed P too many times and you're now on your pencil key, but you wanted to be on your pen key, you can click back P and go back to the pen tool. It'll just cycle through. So watercolor, it works like a watercolor. And you can adjust the amount of paint, which I have a real high density, uh, the color stretch, which will kind of like, I have the color stretch really low. It's not going to go as far. And then stabilization is the error of correction. So it's easiest to see on the pen tool. If I have my stabilization really low, it's going to pick up exactly like every little wiggle I put in. But if I turn up the stabilization really high, it's if I do this, it's going to lag behind to create a more stable line, which is really good if you have a kind of shaky hand. Um, it'll help adjust for those corrections. Okay, and then pencil works how you would expect a pencil would. Um, and then they've got pastels uh, also in here, like a crayon. And then airbrush, it works like an airbrush. It's kind of like splotchy. The decoration tool is, uh, there's effect hatching, like, Diagonal lines. Uh, 
massaging. You can do clothing patterns. So this is like a pre-made ruffle. Move that up really big. Like a pre-made ruffle. Or not. And there's lots of different things. You can go through all of these and uh, play with them because they're really fun to play with. Next, uh, we have the eraser tool, which uh, works like an eraser. Um, if you are more used to Photoshop, um, the eraser tool in Photoshop actually goes off of the uh, background color. So in Photoshop, it goes off of this, uh, which might be a little bit jarring if you're switching to this because it's actually going to work like an eraser uh, rather than trying to paint on the background color instead of erasing. And then the blend tool, which blends, there's different types. Is that a gradient tool, which a lot of gradient, the bucket tool. If I make a selection and I want pink and use the bucket tool, it'll fill it in. Of course, I'm doing this on a gradient. So every time it sees a different color, it's not gonna fill in for the separation of color unless you increase the color margin. I'm doing that and increasing the color margin. And now it'll fill it in if you ha um, have to be on the same layer. Uh, next is the paper paint line. Not entirely sure how this one works. Um, and then there's the figure tool, which will allow you to do straight lines. It's thinking. Oh, that's good. There we go. Oh, great lines. You can do rectangles. You can decide that you only want the outline of the rectangle. So this is really good when you want to make a comic and you got to have boxes. And you can also do, this is gonna be the foreground and the background color on this one. And then the next one down is the type tool. The type tool isn't as um, extensive as uh, Photoshop, so you're not gonna be able to adjust kerning or leading um, or any of those like really typographic um, things, but you can, it's just nice for putting down type for like a comic, filling in word bubbles. And then this is the correct line, which only works on vector layers. And it, Clip Studio is really nice because you can do roster layers, which is what I had been uh, showing you previously. They are a, um, I guess it's best to show with example. If I draw if I draw something I really like, and it's really tiny, and then I scale it up, 
it's gonna get blurry. Um, so we'll click okay on that. If I make a vector tool or a vector layer, it's gonna, vector layers are defined by this little box that shows that it's a vector layer. And I can draw with it. It's still gonna act like a roster layer though. Uh, where, oh no, it's, it actually goes up quite nicely. So see how it's not blurry? That's what a vector line does. But in addition to that, it's also made up of a bunch of anchor points and you can control how the vector lines work with this tool. Anywhere that there's one of these dots is an anchor point, which means it's adjustable. And you can just slide it around. You can redraw a vector line, making it smoother. You can pinch a vector line, which adds an anchor point and then creates like this kind of spike effect, which is kind of cool for those word bubbles where they're like, ah! Um, you can increase the pinch level, which is going to make a more curved line instead of a spike. Uh, then we can go over the Navigator palette. The Navigator palette, I've already kind of talked about this a little bit, but as you can see, I'm zoomed in really close um, on this canvas. And you can see the whole thing from the canvas, plus where I'm, the red box shows where I'm zoomed in. You can adjust the zoom from this panel you can adjust the rotation. You can reset the rotation. And you can also flip uh, vertically and horizontally. So when you want to like double check your work, like you draw, draw like a nice face or whatever. You're like, yeah, that looks great. Uh, and then you swap it and you're like, oh, that looks kind of weird now. <laughs> um, you can adjust it and draw, um, make your fixes and then switch it back. Next, we'll talk about, this is the layer property panel, which um, can determine if it is like a tone panel, you can, the expression color, you can change it to gray or monochrome color. Then the layer, make this bigger. The layer panel is, I made a few layers already, but with the eye, you can turn them on and off. You can create a new layer or new roster layer by clicking on this one. And you can clear, create a new vector layer by clicking on this one. You can create folders uh, to help organize your files. So if I have these two layers visible um, and this folder visible, I can collapse the folder and then turn them on and off. Separate from, I can also alternatively turn them both off or on. But that's really nice when you've got like a lot of um, tiny pieces, like you've got three characters uh, or like a panel and you put all of panel one in a folder. You can create clipping masks and you can change panel color, layer colors, so. You can also, if you need a layer to stand out, you can highlight it like this with this little drop down. Um, 
Next, let's talk about the perspective tool. Um, this is really nice um, because buildings are hard and let's see, it's on layer, ruler, and creates perspective ruler pop-up box appears like this one. And you can choose between one, two, or three point perspective. You click OK. And so this line right here that's horizontally across the board is the eye level, which you can adjust. And then these are your vanishing points which you can move off of your canvas, so you're not limited to that. And then you can go in with your line tool. This creates a new layer, which you can turn on and off. Uh, but you can go in with a new layer and your line tool. And oh, that's a big line. Go ham on these lines, and you can make a box. I zoomed out really far, so it's hard to see. I obviously didn't connect them. There we go. Yeah, that's um, helpful and a quick tool. Then you can just turn that off and none the wiser, right? Um, then in the document, I linked a pretty cool tutorial uh, by a, an illustrator who's got some really nice stuff. Uh, the next tool, well, I've got this one open. I should go over the material palette actually. And then I'll show you the colorized tool. So the material palette is um, this one right here. You, if you manage to close this, you can always window and where is it? material color pattern. So it opens up a pretty big uh, section, but anything with the green cloud is something that you would have to download. It's not already preloaded with um, Clip Studio. Anything that doesn't have it is already in there and you can just drag and drop it into the program. Uh, if you have a selected area, you can drag it into that selected area. And it's got this bounding box, which means that you can resize this, which is nice. And you can also rotate it. So I'll click out of that. And so there are a ton of uh, you can, there are patterns, effects, uh, backgrounds. Um, a lot of these backgrounds are actually 3D assets, which I've found can be pretty taxing on the computer. So I've got a kind of old one and I've got 3D monitors hooked up, which means my computer doesn't really like to load um, these 3D assets because they're quite taxing. Um, that's uh, just a warning for anyone who else might have multiple monitors or an older computer uh, and gets frustrated with that. It's actually your PC just can't handle the, um, the program trying to run 3D assets along with 2D assets. Uh, but you can see that there's a ton of like preloaded in 
mannequins, which are all adjustable um, in there as if you were using a 3D modeler. Uh, if you were to use the EX version, you can turn um, 3D assets into line art, but because I don't have that one, I'm not able to go over that. Uh, but that is a feature that the more expensive, expensive version has. Uh, I like to just draw my draws. Oh, yeah. We have a question from Francis asked, what are the layers? Um, the layers are right here. And layers are um, like, imagine that you have a piece of paper and then you have tons of sheets of tracing paper. Uh, so when you have, you can lay down your papers right here and then you can draw on a layer. It's like a sketch layer. And um, when you draw that draw, when you draw that sketch layer, So this is like a new layer. I'm making a new layer. And then I can draw something. Oh, hold on. I'm going to turn off the perspective grid. I'm drawing like just a circle and then an eye. And then I want to put a new piece of paper on top of that, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a new roster layer. And I can turn this layer down because I think that it's too bright. And then I can go in and with my pen tool, I can make, I can trace over it with, um, with cleaner lines to give me a more finished product. And so I can later turn this off, but I want to color, I want to color this, but I don't want to interfere with what I've already done. So I can put another piece of virtual tracing paper under it with the new roster layer. And then I can color it without interfering with that layer. Um, and then there's blending modes. Uh, often people use these blending modes to shade or add highlights. So you can add another layer and the most common method is to do a purple-ish color. That doesn't really look like shading, but if we do a multiply layer, it turns into a more saturated, darker color than what's underneath it. And that allows us to make a kind of pseudo shading. And if I think that that's too bright, I can change the opacity of this layer to make it a little bit more subtle. Um, and that's what layers are used for. And if I have a lot of different objects, I can put them in a folder by dragging them. And you'll know they're in the folder because if you close them, close the folder, all those layers will go away. Like, they're just hidden in here. And you can name these to help you with your organization, like skin shading. And just by double clicking in. Oh, I 
guess this is actually line art layer. Line art. Skin shading. And okay. um, does that did that answer your question? Okay, perfect. Um, and then let's see. Get the perspective tool, the material palette. And I can show you the colorize tool, which uh, really helps with if you want to color something fast. Uh, so I made a I made this sample. So this is a line art. And we can ask, um, Clip Studio has developed an AI that will automatically color uh, where it thinks that you want color. And then you can go in and edit that color to um, like finalize your drawing. So we do that by doing edit, colorize right here, and colorize all. And it's going to give us a guess at what we want it to be colored like. That looks pretty cool, but maybe it's not the colors I wanted. So we can also decide, oh, let me turn on this layer. These are the colors that I actually want it. And so we can go to this color sample and, oh, I forgot. Um, with the line art, I have the line art. We can right click and Oh, it's because it's already. Um, this button right here is set as reference layer. You can click this to set the line art as a reference layer, which means that when the program needs to look for something to look at, it's going to say, oh, I see you've got this thing that I can look at. And um, it, and where there's not pixels, um, which is so this is the paper where there's not pixels and then everywhere there's color there are pixels um but the anything that's not a reference layer doesn't count so with the color sample layer selected i can ask it to edit colorize, use hint image and colorize. And it's going to blend all of those colors together to give a guess at what it thinks that we want. And then we can go in and we can shade it or um, change this hair color right here to match right here and same with this. And that just gives us a head start and makes coloring a bit simpler. And it's all on a single layer. And so, yeah. This is 
This layer is one that I copied. You can copy a layer by just dragging it to the new layer. Um, and it'll create a new one, but this one is one that I started drawing over. So the eyes are now blue and the skin's a lot um, clearer looking and there's some shading. And then you can just go over your entire drawing like that. And let's see. Did we have any questions? Take a drink or something. I'm not just sorry. I know I went over like a lot of stuff. <laughs> The last part I want to go over is um, you saw assets in the material panel that I didn't have. Um, I want to show you how you can get assets. Um, so here's the Clip Studio launcher where you can also look for tips and tutorials. Um, but you can also go to Clip Studio assets. You have to be logged in, actually. So some assets are gonna cost money. I'm gonna ignore those. But like um, this pencil cool tool looks really cool. And then you just download it. And then you click cancel and go back to Clip Studio. Go to the download one and these are all the ones that I've downloaded. This GK pen is my favorite. And then to get those in there, you just need to drag and drop into the sub tool palette and then you can use it. And these are, they show you examples. The other part is the tutorials. You can look how to like, basic operations might be a little different for iPad or iPhone, which you can use Clip Studio on. And you can look at tutorials on there. You can look at how to get started with digital art. Um, if you're like super new to art, I suggest uh, this one, making your first illustration, 
it's really simple, only a few steps and pretty straightforward. Uh, but there are different categories and just tons of people uh, uploading stuff to help learn. Uh, but then there's also the Q&A section, which is over here. And you can see that there's a, an active forum of questions that you can ask a question. It's posted twice here. Um, or you can look at other people's questions. And then there's tips. So yeah, it, that's all I have um, to go over.